Okay, welcome everybody to Coffee and Art in the Morning. It's hump day, people. It's hump day. Uh, <laughs> Mike, Mike, Mike. So anyway, I don't know why there's a line there. When I move too quickly, you see a line. I don't know why. have no idea. So if you see it, just, you know, like me, just deal with it. Because I don't know why it's doing that if I move too quickly. So we'll just try to move kind of slow. <laughs> so I'm going to show you some things I got. And then I think we might try a project out of this. I've already shown this book. But we haven't done anything in it yet. So I thought maybe we would do something out of this book. These coloring tips. There's some animal eyes. Y'all want to do an animal eye? The last, in the other book, in Helen's book, we did a human eye. <clears throat> so this is Jennifer Zimmerman. So maybe we'll do an animal eye in hers. How about that? So I also picked up yesterday a few things. I got this Calligraphy Made Easy book. Now, y'all know, y'all, I've shown my stacks and stacks of calligraphy books. That being said, I don't have a lot of brush lettering. Um, you know, I've done calligraphy since the 80s with the steel nib, you know, dip pen, pen nib calligraphy, not brush lettering. So we're all on the bandwagon. <laughs> We're all on the brush lettering bandwagon. And I did post over the weekend some of my practice sheets. Um, and this is just notebook paper. Just plain old notebook paper. And I drew some black lines. They're not even. I mean, they're just, you know. So anyway, I did some practicing uh, from Right Pretty, uh, right Pretty. What's her name? I'll try to remember to put the link in my description box. I found her on uh, YouTube. And... Um, no more than Eileen Burchan. Eileen. Uh, and if you're watching this on YouTube, it is a live show on Ustream with a live chat, mostly awake people. So I am talking to a live audience. And I do repeat myself because people come and go and they ask the same questions over and over. So I repeat them over and over. So anyway. <laughs> Uh, so this is some of the practice that I did over the weekend. And I did write down what pins I was used. This one was the Artist Loft pins, which to me are pretty much like the, uh, they're like the uh, Tombow. I, there's not a whole lot of difference between them, especially the shape of the, I mean, the colors are a little different. One's supposed to be watercolor. I don't know, the Tombow is, not, is water activated but it's not supposed to be watercolor I guess but they both move with water but the artist loft one brands itself as watercolor pens and then I got the Tombow a set of Tombow here and so I wrote down what I use next to it so like these are the artist loft this one is an artist loft and then I did these with the super tips so uh, I, I either use the artist loft the Tombow or the super tips, these, the super tip Crayola, these, okay, oh, thanks, well, I caught, these are copies from, um, the girl, write pretty, I, I can't, write pretty things, write pretty things, thank you, CBC, that's the name of her YouTube channel, write pretty things, so I just, she has all, I don't know how many videos, I, I went to about 10 of them, and uh, so these were some of her things. So I just kind of copied her. I would write a letter and pause the video. Then she'd write the next letter and I'd pause it. And I'd write the letter. And then she'd and then I'd pause it and write letter by letter. So that's how I did these. Okay. Here's where she showed. There it is. I wrote it right there. Write pretty things. Okay. So this is the artist loft. And this is called the every other letter bounce. That's what she calls it. So it's every other letter has a bounce. So that, that's that practice. Hey, Oak Lady. Good to see you. It's been a while. Hey, Kiggles. Uh, and then these are just some, this is with the artist loft. Here's some A's, B's, C's. And you can see where I'd get false starts. And I would just start over. This is just notebook paper, people. Just notebook paper. These were with the super tips. You know, these Crayola super tips. Super tips. Super tips. 
Super Tips. Artist Loft Tombow. You can just see one's a little darker than the other, but. Super Tips. Artist Loft Tombow. Super Tips. Super Tips. Super Tips. Yeah. So, those are some of the practices that I did over the weekend. It's not much. You might It may look like a lot. <laughs> this is not a lot. Trust me. When you're practicing, this is not a lot. <laughs> this would be like a warm-up, you know. Um, but a couple things, you know, I, I think anybody that does brush lettering knows that it's heavy on the downstroke, thin, thin on the upstroke. I did not realize this, uh, and I should have because you do the same thing in calligraphy. Now, when you're doing italic handwriting, you know, when you're doing italic handwriting, you're just, oh, and a couple other things. When you're writing to keep it at a 45 degree angle, put the point toward you like that. Put the point toward you so you'll have the right angle, okay? Um, but I'm not going to try to do that right now. I just want to show you. When you're doing italic hand cursive writing you're just you're writing like um you know Dee Dee and then willingham you're, you're you're continuing it on right you just one one flow when you're doing brush lettering it's not that way i for some reason thought that like let's just say you were doing um an h i was thinking that when you did an h you just like you know you just kind of um you just kept going, right? You just kept, you kept, uh, you didn't lift your pen. That's not true. Um, on, on the, in between the thin to the thick, you lift your pen. And not only that, you write slow. I don't know why I got, I, I don't know why I wouldn't have thought of that because of having done, you know, calligraphy with the, uh, uh, dip, you know, steel nibs for so many years. But when you're doing your lettering, you're, you are to go very slow. And when you get to like, let's go up here to the H, you stop, you lift your pen. And then you go back down. Then you lift your pen. Wherever the thin and thick meet, you lift your pen. And you go very slow. They stress slow. I don't know why I just didn't even think about it. Because, you know, when I'm doing calligraphy with the nib pen, I'm just going slow. I'm going slow. <laughs> so I don't know why I thought you just kind of, I guess because it looks cursive-y, you think you just got to write it like you do cursive. No, you don't. So those are probably the main tips that I could give you for just starting is... Put the point of your paper down. If you're lefty, I know, it's a whole nother thing, Terry. <clears throat> I couldn't even begin to tell you what to do for a lefty. I really, I would Google it or, you know, uh, search YouTube for it. Left hand brush lettering people. <laughs> I would, because I have no idea how you would deal with it, truly. Um, so, yeah, so then you, you, you're, you lift. So you'd go like that. You see how you lift in between the thick and the thin? You don't have to necessarily just like go like that and like completely off the page. But, and you go slow. Whoop, that's a little th thin. But I'm trying to make myself do that. I'm trying to make myself lift and go really slow. And that's kind of, you know... And then there's different curls you can do at the end. but, And that one I just did a drop down on the H. Yeah, super tips work. Um, it, there, you do have to... The thing about the super tips is because the thin is on the, you know, on the literally on the point. So you have to, with the super tips, you have to literally kind of, you have to tilt it up just a little to get that thin, right? 
because you can't just write like this with the super tip and get thick and thin like you can you know you got to kind of you have to lift you have to get it you know on the point with the super tips but yeah I did a lot of these with the super tips here these are all with the super tips now you can see like if I got a false start I would just stop and do it again but I was trying to do all this practice without lifting my pen on the thin stroke I don't know why I didn't I thought that you had to do it all in one stroke you know because in 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 a calligraphy with the steel nib you don't do it all in one stroke you lift you make a stroke then you you know <clears throat> So anyway, but it is a little different. I mean, well, you know, it's quite a bit different when you're when you're used to um, when you're used to uh, a nib pen using a brush pen. So does that help anybody? It did me. <clears throat> and the writing slow part. She in this in her book here. Where'd it go? In her book here, she talked about. Write slower than you think is slow. You know. I know, right? I just don't know why I didn't think about lifting the pen. <laughs> so anyway, there's a couple of tips there for you uh, for that. And I'll show you this book. I'm not going to do practice today. I just wanted to show you that so that when I show this book, so it's calligraphy made easy ashley gardner and she does have a instagram i don't know about facebook or any of that i didn't go hunt that up um but she she gives you and i got this at barnes i mean books a million i got it books a million it's 12.97 but i had a coupon and i'm a member so i got another 10 percent so I, I think i paid 10 bucks or nine dollars something like that for it uh, but it was over in the, you know, where they have this, if you go, ever go to BAM, they have stacks of books out and, and they're not like in, um, they're not in a, like it wasn't in the art section. It was in the stacked out books. Well, so anyway, and it'll probably end up going on sale and you might be able to get it on Amazon, you know, cheaper. So anyway, um, she's, she started a business back in 2012 doing uh, specialized calligraphy like this and she talks about her the paper the pens and she talks about the Tombow um, that's what she recommends the Tombow dual brush tips um, <clears throat> and she does talk about dip pens which this book she says this is not what she's doing in this book uh, she talks about the anatomy of calligraphy. And, and again, calligraphy just means pretty writing. But if you want to distinguish between uh, hand lettering, brush lettering, and calligraphy. For me, calligraphy has always been like steel nib kind of calligraphy. Although technically brush lettering is calligraphy. It just means beautiful writing. But I distinguish it differently than, than the brush lettering. Because if you just say calligraphy, people think, oh, I can just do that with a dip pen. Well, no. <laughs> it's, you know, it's not that easy to do something like this with a, with a nib. And um, so anyway, she shows how the downstrokes are thick, the upstrokes are thin. And here's where she said, pick up your pen between strokes. And I went, oh, well, you do that with regular calligraphy. Why would I think? Because it looks italics, right? And when you're writing in italic, you know, when you're writing in cursive, you don't pick up your pen no, normally. I mean, you know, if you 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 eventually end up with your own style of a uh, of a cursive as you get older. But um, so I just assumed you just kept on writing it, right? No, you pick it. You pick up your pen, and then write slowly. This is the most important rule: write very slowly especially with brush calligraphy think of this as drawing not writing you will take at least 10 times longer to write each word if you are doing it right 
And this is where I see most beginners become frustrated that they cannot get nice, thin, and thick strokes, usually because they are riding too fast. So there we go. And then she has warm-up exercises with just a pencil, just to get your flow going. And then all the different warm-up drills. You can see all the different warm-up drills here. And you can find all this stuff, guys, on YouTube. And you can find all this everywhere. Tombow website has practice sheets to print on. Oh, well, good, Jerry. I did not know that. So the Tombow website has practice sheets to print off that you can trace, you know, go over. And she has some lighter ones here that she tells you to go over those. Um, if you want to get the strokes, you know, flowing right, you know. <clears throat> That's good to know. Thanks, Jerry. So she gives you all the letters there. And um, I, I, I've always called them uppercase and lowercase. But, you know, they call them minuscule. Yeah, so. And magic, magicals. Magicals. <laughs> I call them upper and lower case, but, you know, big and little letters. So, and then she shows you some different, um, the bounce lettering, you know, so that it goes, you know, up and down and different levels to make it look very creative. So she has a lot of that. Then she, at, toward the back, and then she has words where you can practice words. But in, what I really liked about this, here's some composition, um, projects. So she does a, she does a project in the uh, watercolor. I, I'm looks like water, yeah, watercolor, watercolor um, sample, and then she gives you a, a page to do it as well. So you can see, you can do the, and you don't have to write the same thing. Of course, if you, that's good practice, but. Um, so I'm just going to flip through this real quick so you can see what she's given you to practice on. So I thought this was a good investment for 10 bucks, you know. <clears throat> and this gives you ideas too. If you like to watercolor, then you can make your own. Or stamping. I could see this being done with the watercolor stamps, you know, the stamp sets that you uh, use a marker on and you wet them and it makes it stamp kind of blurry and stamp like a watercolor effect. There's stamps you can do with that too. I'm not enabling, I'm just saying. <laughs> So isn't that cool, guys? There's a lot of projects, a lot of good ideas. Even if you didn't actually do it in here, <clears throat> you could practice, you know, on a piece of uh, cardstock. And she does recommend on smooth paper, but to just to practice on printer paper. I just practice, I'm just practicing on notebook paper. Has some lines. But you can get that, um, you can get this kid's rule paper that looks like this. See how it's the dotted lines in there too? And you can also get the kind of paper that has the 45 degree angle on it. That might help you. I don't know, you know. Hey, Kitty Marimau. Hey, Jen. <clears throat> Let me get a sip of coffee, guys. I, sorry, my voice is half gone from sleeping with the window open because it was in the 50s. It went from the 20s to the 50s. Isn't that pretty, though? And there's a lot of them. This is, this is 27 right here. So, yeah, there's 30, 30 projects. So, anyway... Then there's a whole bunch of blanks in the back. But it's Calligraphy Made Easy by Ashley Gardner. Her company is called Printable Wisdom. And the ISBN, let me get my magnifying glass out here. The ISBN is 978 
0981. <clears throat> so yeah, there's a little there's a little tip there. Okay, so I got that. And I got a couple other things. I'm not going to show tell you why I got this stuff. I did post it on a picture on Twitter. But I did get some... The Hobby Lobby had all their ribbon on sale, 50% off. So I think this these were like a <clears> dollar. <throat> these were like $2.50. Um, I have plans for these. And uh, yeah, so I'm not going to do that project today. But I just wanted a little... Yeah. So... <laughs> There's a little tease. I did get a couple other things. I got these at Michael's. Let me, and we're gonna go. We're gonna work in this book today. Um, I got these at Michael's. They're the Craft Smart. There's some watercolor brushes that have uh, different textures to them. You can make different kind of. Of course, a fan brush. If you ever used a fan brush, you kind of know what that does. But I really kind of liked them for these these three right here. These three right here for lettering. So I'm going to, you know, although this one's probably too long. This one's probably just about right. But I love my Filberts. And I just, I just wanted some new brushes. And uh, I think I got them for, with the coupon, 30% off everything. I think I got them for about, I don't know, five bucks. So, and I like the black handles. They just look nice, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when I showed these on Twitter, Jean said, it looks like a lot of oink there. She meant pink. Jean's favorite color is green. So, I told her we needed to do some green eggs and ham. Yeah, the large rake brush, yeah. So anyway, um, I got those. I haven't used them yet. Just got them yesterday. So I wanted to show you those. We're going to work in this today. But first, before we do, and I know there's a line going through there when I move quickly, guys. I have no idea what that line is, why that's there when I move quickly. I have no idea. I don't know if I turn the quality down a little, if that will. Nope, it's still doing it. I don't know. I just guess we can't move fast. <laughs> so the other thing I got at Hobby Lobby, I went to Michael's Hobby Lobby and the bookstore just to get out of the house yesterday. It's been, you know, cold and freezing and like really freezing for Atlanta area. So I got out of the house yesterday and just, you know, took my time, looked around, talked to some people that I know at the stores and all that. And uh, just to get out of the house. Hey, Zig. So th we talked about this last week. And I have bought these before. I don't know where all my loose stamps are. They're probably in a drawer back behind here. And I just, I need to go, I need to rearrange and do more work in the room. Um, but uh, I have bought these before. It's been probably, I'd say at least 10 years since I bought a pack of these. And uh, so even if I do find them, there's, you know, maybe 100 that I have left. But anyway, they're, they, they're over in, at Hobby Lobby, they're over in the hobby section. The coin collecting, the stamp collecting, uh, there's a section for that. And um, they sell, these are the worldwide stamps. They sell USA, they sell, now there's like three different packs. And they're $6.99, I use my 40% off coupon. So they were, you know, $4, something like that for 300 stamps. I've not opened them and taken them out yet. I waited till here. I wanted to yesterday. And the it has a nice heavy plastic bag. I really like the bag too. Of course, they're not staying in this bag. They'll end up in a bowl or something. Okay, so we're going to take them all out. They're all wrapped. This is the way they come. They're wrapped in corrugate. Wait for it. Wait, it's going to be like an explosion of stamps. <laughs> Uh, boom! Oh, it didn't unfurl like I thought. I thought it was gonna unfurl. Okay, so here and they and they're canceled stamps, and they are on still on the papers. That's the way they come. Okay, here's some other ones. U.S. Stamp Album Starter. If you want to get started in stamp collecting, of course we know we're not collecting these, right? <laughs> we all know that. So there's 300 of them here. And you can see they're just canceled stamps from around the world. Isn't that cool? 
So let's just take a moment, shall we? And, and let's let's unbind them. Let's loosen them. Let's give them freedom. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, and I'm I'm not going to say what I told Jennifer to do with them because I'm going to leave that to if she wants to do something with it that'll be our secret. Although I tweeted it, but anyway, I told Jennifer something to do with stamps. Like, look, Jennifer, this one might need to come to you. Look at that. And I do need my magnifying glass. So this one is. I think this is Germany, or could be Netherlands, and uh, so yeah, we're going to just take a few minutes and just look at them, yeah, Hobby Lobby, yeah, you hope you don't need them, you don't need need them, you know, <laughs> let's see, this one I think goes this way, these are, yeah, Dutch, Do Deutschland, so let's see. And they're all canceled. Oh, well, I guess let me, let me maybe if I zoom in a little. Let's see if we can do that. And let's see. That looks pretty good. I don't want to get too close because it'll just pixelate. But, you know, maybe you can see some of them here. Of course, I'm not going to go through all 300. <laughs> I just want you to kind of see. And um, I like, I've always liked, and we, I, I was in a project, uh, I forget what it was. Was it an ATC project? I don't remember what kind of project. I, I have used them multiple times on ATCs. But there was a, um, you, you did a worldwide travel thing, and I tried to find the stamp for the country in the project that would match it. So I use them for, you know, collage, mixed media. Yeah, Jennifer, I know, right? Look, there's a little dog. Now, they all have the cancellation on because they all have been, you know, they're all used stamps. Right? I guess I'll just stay right here. <clears throat> Look, there's one with the lighthouse, Jennifer. That one doesn't have a big stamp mark on it. Um, that one might be a good one for you, Jennifer. Jennifer, Jennifer and I made plans for these, some of these. <laughs> we'll see if she, if she doesn't have to do it. I'm going to hold that one out for her. Uh, she doesn't obviously have to do the idea, but she liked the idea. I'm not going to tell you all the idea. I'll have to wait. <laughs> I'll pull out a few for you, Jennifer. But aren't they cool, guys? These look like somebody started to do some collecting. They're like kind of tacked down with the little... Um, stamp collectors use this little tape stuff that's like doesn't hurt the stamps. And that's what this person looked like they were trying to do with this. This says Norge. Is that like Norway? Sweden? Norge? Um, look how cute though. There's some of them are just beautiful. Look. There's one from Australia with some little uh, pair uh, little parakeets. I'm just gonna take a couple minutes to kind of flip through them. Here's another Australia with some koala bears. This one is. Looks like the states. No, I think it's Germany. Germany. Um, so, yeah. What do y'all think? Aren't these cool? No. <laughs> This would be a good one for Jennifer here. There's another Australia. Little florals. South Africa. 
Here's another one. Australia. Looks like a cartoon. Um, there's the Queen. Here's another one from... I'm not sure, but the flower is just a priority. I'm not sure from where. You could probably, if you looked real close on the stamp. Very cool. Yeah, Melissa, aren't they? So anyway, I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to show you all 300. But I had to show you some. Some trees. Where's this one from? This one, Europa 2000. That's what it says on there. It's like an Olympic type stamp. So, you know, and you do get duplicates. But, you know, if you're using them in mixed media and collage and stuff. This one looks like a Da Vinci drawing. This one's from, you know, that looks like a Da Vinci type sketch. I'll send that one to Jennifer. Um, a lot of Australia here. Koalas, flowers, birds. Another Australia. Um, yeah, so isn't that cool, guys? <clears throat> for it, so this is a lot of fun in a bag for five bucks. You know what I mean? It's a lot of fun in a bag for five bucks. Italy. And some of them I just have to have the magnifying glass to see them. And you always get a lot of the queen. You just do, you know. <laughs> but I also like the papers that they're on. There's all different kind of papers and um, stamp, um, cancel stamps. The canceled stamp. Not the postage stamp, but the stamp. <clears throat> that looks like another Olympic, Australia, Olympics, you know. So, yeah. I use your stamp. I use three of my stamp collection on my week one syllables page. <laughs> Did you? I hope they weren't your your value. Well, I'm sure they weren't. Oh, look, a BFW anniversary. Do you want this one, Julie Topaz? Julie works with vets, so this was a 75th anniversary VFW. Ten cents. You need this one, Julie Topaz. I'll set that one aside for you. Here's one with the Titanic. I'm guessing it's a ship. I don't know if it's a Titanic. Oh, here, look. This is an Australia one. Look, um, Jennifer. That would work for your project. I'm going to call it your project now, Jennifer. Wouldn't this one work for your project, Jennifer? <laughs> Okay, I set it aside over here for you, uh, um, Julie Topaz. Yeah. You always wanted an art job designing stamps? Yeah. This one will work for your project, Jennifer. I'm going to give you that one. So anyway, there's uh, all kinds. Here's a, this it looks uh, Japanese. It looks like those Soshi screen type painting things. I'm, I know there's a name for it. I'm not. That's not right. But yeah, that's two stamps. See, it's two stamps that weren't um, were not unperforated. So yeah, I'll have to go through these. I, I'll go through them personally. I'll go through them one by one. I will look at every one. If I find anything else VFW like that, uh, Julie, I'll pull it for you too. Um, and I'm pulling. I, I got a little stack here for Jennifer already. For her project. Look, Jennifer. <laughs> so, anyway, guys. I'm, that's all I'm going to go through right now. I just wanted y'all to kind of see the variety. Here's a New Zealand. 
um, the, see the variety of the worldwide stamps you get. Here's um, the Magi, and that's England. See the Queen up there? Well, it could be, I guess it could be Canada, but I think it's pretty sure. So anyway, all right, let me put all these somewhere. I don't even have a bowl. Oh, wait, yeah, I do. Okay, let me pick up the one on the floor. All right, so yeah, I just wanted to share that with you because, you know, not trying to enable, but, you know, who couldn't use some stamps <laughs> in, in our uh, in our mixed media world, right? So again, there are Hobby Lobby normal prices six ninety nine. Use a forty percent off coupon, and uh, they're over in the hobby section. Okay, let me go put these over in my happy mail section in my. One for Julie. I gotta get some happy mail done to go out at least by Friday. I try not to send Hubster to the post office more than twice a week. <laughs> you didn't know about them? Yeah, and you can get USA too in a separate pack. Um, you can buy, you know, they're in separate separate bags. See, this one is 300 genuine worldwide stamps surprise collection in other words you get what you get <laughs> that's what that means okay <laughs> so let's see do i need this corrugate that would be that's a good one for stamping right there corrugate's good for stamping lines if you haven't uh maybe i'll cut this up and put some of this in my idea collection because this would be good to send out for the when i do the happy mail uh what do you call it uh giveaways this would be because you can you can uh ink these or um paint on them and and they're like a stamp you can use it for a stamp so we'll we'll do that i gotta cut this one down because it won't fit in a business size envelope i try to keep it i try to keep those giveaways in a business size envelope so yeah there we go all right. All right. So back to, and I know there's that line there, guys. I guess I'm just moving too quick. <laughs> I don't know. Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby is on HSN today. Yeah. I don't know. I've. I gotta say, guys, I watch those all the time, and it's and it's pretty much unless there's something new. Now I do enjoy um, what's her name, Anna Griffin, because she's got such pretty things. But it's I don't I don't I don't buy from them. But uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is the secret of Co the secrets of coloring by Jennifer Zimmerman. Let me show you the other one that we. I can find it real quick that we did some projects out of well a at least a project the color of special effects by Helen Elliston and we did did I, did I say I put it in this book is it in my big book here let me look I think I pulled it out last time and showed that it's in this book I, I kind of disassembled this because I sent out a whole bunch of my sketches for, um, what do you call it, um, <laughs> Christmas. Uh, <clears throat> but I think that eyeball is in here somewhere. Yeah, here we go. I should pull this out, I guess. Because I keep going back to this big, heavy Mama Jamba sketchbook. All right. Uh. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the eye we did based out of Helen's book. And she did a step-by-step -step here. 
and I tried my best to follow along with it as closely as her instructions said. Uh, where is it? There it is. So it was this. These are all the steps. How to create realistic eyes. And I did not copy. She said if you don't feel like you could draw this just to make a copy of it. I just drew it as closely as I could to it. And then we did step by step coloring it. Until we got to this. So there was the tear on the cheek. Is that all there was? Oh, here we go. Here's a close-up of Okay, we didn't do that. Th these were different ways to glisten. So you could glisten it this way, glisten this way. So there's different glistening. We went with the tear. So here was the tear. And then here's the one we we did. Let me just tape it on there. It's got so there's where we um, drew uh, her her eye. So you can see, look, my eyebrow's different than hers, and, you know, I just hand drew it, so. Thanks, Jennifer. So anyway, um, this is really the only project we've done out of this book, and I know we, there, we just have so many projects to do, you know, we only get so many things done, but I think I will just leave that kind of sticking out there like that so I can find it the next time. So this one, and she also has a new book out. Helen has another book out. Did you have an issue with your camera shutter last week? My camera shutter? I don't know if I did. I mean, it did this last week as well, but I don't know why. You know, I don't know why it's doing that. I don't know what to change. I mean, I'm using the same settings and everything except for some lighting settings that I lighten and darken depending on the time of day. But I don't have shutter settings like like a like a camera does. You know what I mean, Vern? But hi Triz, by the way. So I'm not sure what to how to I don't know. <laughs> So this one is The Secrets of Coloring by Jennifer Zimmerman. And I did a little bit of a flip through it last last week or the week before. Anyway, <laughs> in my uh, Christmas gift book haul. That's where I showed this one. So, um, yeah, I think we want to do the animal eye. But I will go ahead and flip through it one more time just like this. Oh, I do that every time button. I never leave my uh, camera plugged into my lappy. At the end of the day, when we're done, I unplug it. Every every single time, it's unplugged. Because I move lappy around the house, and I don't take the camera with me. So, yeah, I don't think that's going to help. Because uh, it was doing this last week. See that line right there when I move fast? It was doing that last week, too. So, she gives you all the, you know, different sharpeners, paint brushes, your usual supplies. You know, every book like that has, uh, you know, the kinds of supplies they use. Yeah, it does have a line there, Triz, but I, my, what I'm trying to say is I don't know why. But I don't have any shutter settings in, a, in my webcam. Yeah, I don't know. I, it could be Ustream. It could be Ustream. Who kn we don't know. <laughs> when there's stuff like that happens, it's a mystery. <laughs> okay, so um, time-saving uh, um, tips. She, here she has, um, and this is, I've done this since I started coloring. Is a Now, she's talking about here a marker base. Um, which, you know, you can use watercolor, marker, uh, I like uh, water watered down acrylic paints, and it does save time. You would be surprised how much, if you've never done a, a base coat with watercolor, watered down acrylic, or marker as a base coat to pencil over, you have no idea how much time that saves. So... Um, let's see here. So this is the one that we've been working on. 
the Alice. I did, uh, I am still working on, I did do some of the background and um, made it look like parchment because that's kind of what it looked like. So I did a scruffly kind of penciling and with Neo Color washes and made it look like parchment. So you can kind of see the background there that I'm working on. So I am trying to do <clears throat> as much of the background and washes as possible off camera because it, it's boring to watch. <laughs> you know, it's and I realize that people don't want to just see you constantly, you know, just doing one thing in the background for three hours. <clears throat> this background probably took me three hours. I did a little bit of a base coat on last on part two of this. And uh, but it's just takes time, you know, even with a wash of something, you know, it takes time. I could have done it with marker. It's, you know, it's got a thing on the back here, but I'm not going to color this. So I could have done it with marker. <clears throat> Hang on, let me take a sip of coffee here. I could have done it with marker and it would still have taken probably not quite as long as painting it in, but it still takes time, you know. Okay, so here she shows the marker underlay and then the color pencil on the top for that jewel. <clears throat> Here's some um, shading. Haha, <laughs> Jean. <laughs> some color theory, color wheels, and then here's some little uh, testers for you to do, you know, to with different colors, different, like here she did the same bird um, in monochromatic with all purples, complementary, you know, she did the different color wheel, and then you have places where you can practice those. Here is... Um, Creating realistic pictures by adding extra dimension. I think she's talking about here using the background to pop out the the, the little piece there. So just all kinds, and she does give you spaces for testing things out. But the paper, the paper in the book is kind of, it's not exactly slick. Um, but I don't know how conducive this would be for actually working on, um, you know, I, I haven't done it. I haven't done any, uh, but it just, it has that slick kind of feel to it. Hey G, anybody else popping in? Mixed media again. Uh, I'm not sure what she used here. I think she's using marker. Marker as a base. I haven't had time to read it yet. <laughs> so many projects. Okay, so this one is Pan Pastel. And that's that's one that I, I don't do pastels. Not that there's anything wrong with it if you want to do pastels. And then she's going over the pastel with pencil here in this demo. So she does, here's her pan pastels, and then more with the pencil on top. Hey, Coco Ray. Again, more pan pastels. It looks like she's going back and forth between the two on that demo. And here's the eyes. This is a wolf eye. So this is what I was thinking we could maybe do this eye. Now, I don't know if I want to take the time to do all the fur, but I'd like to at least do the eye. Here's a snake eye. Here's a cat eye. Maybe we'll do a cat eye. kind of like the cat eye. Here's the wolf eye. Cat eye. An iridescent bug. An iridescent beetle. Here's uh, coloring bleeding heart floor flowers. Here's doing shiny yellow gold and rose gold. How to do different golds. 
a mirror. She's looking in a mirror. Here is cobalt blue pearl on toned paper. That's pretty. And she's using Prismacolor Premier. I don't know if that's what she's using on all of them. Yeah, it looks like she is using Prismacolor. That might be fun to do, too. And then here's an iridescent metallic pearl on tone tan. A satin ribbon. I love doing satin ribbons. I could do satin ribbons all day. Um, here is a faceted pink diamond on tone tan paper. Here is a golden egg and nest on tone tan paper. A Mojave turquoise. And then here's some sample thing, pages for you to practice on here. You're setting up a mirror and canvas for your self-portrait. Oh, okay, Bunny. You're going to do a self-portrait. What are you going to do it in? Are you painting it, drawing it? What are you going to do? Paint it or draw it? So I kind of like this. Here she talks about two ways to begin the pearl. With two highlights or three. Bye, CB. Hi, bye. I didn't see you come in. So, I kind of like the cat eye. We could try the cat eye. Water-based oils. Fun. Okay. I think we're going to go with this. So, she uses, and I probably have every Prismacolor. Oh, I know I do, but I have to dig them out. Then she uses a kneaded eraser to lighten, optional. A Mono Zero eraser pen for mistakes, optional. A Uniball Signo white gel pen, you know, for the highlights. And um, black waterproof pens such as Copic, Faber-Castell, or Micron, optional. So, yeah. I think I want to just draw with pencil, though. I don't want black lines. That's one of the things about um, black line in a color book. When you go to do eyes, especially on a color book, is you, you don't have black lines on your actual skin. And so sometimes, now, obviously, this cat has black ringed around the eye but um you know humans unless you have on makeup you don't have a black line around your eye and you know color book artists have to draw a black line they have to so you can see it unless it's like lightly done in grayscale or something like that you know they could grayscale it but you know to to show where you have to color there's going to be black lines and i always uh, especially like on um jasmine's books i white out that because I don't like the black line. Uh, in this case, it's not going to matter because it is a black line around it. But, you know, just saying. Um, you know, and a lot of times we'll put makeup on the girls and stuff like that. So, okay. So, I think we'll do this. So, let's see. Let's just get a piece of white. And I don't want to get anything fancy. I want everybody to be able to do it. I think we just did this on a piece of cardstock last time. So we'll just go with a piece of cardstock. How about that? Just go with the piece of cardstock. And uh, I'll cut it down so that we can, you know, kind of about the same as I did the other eye. How about that? Okay. So let me tilt this here so I can stay close and we'll zoom in it's pretty good there all right are y'all with the tour oh is everybody staying with the tour let me get my blue lid well you know what I don't want anything I want to keep it as as I would normally if I was going to draw this myself draw it with my blue lead 
with my uh, graph gear, <laughs> but I don't want people to go, oh, I don't have that graph gear, so I can't do this. So we're just going to go with, <laughs> we're just going to go with a light, you know, like a sepia color pencil or something to draw with. Oh, I got to find all my, see, I don't have all my pencils at the ready. You're still with the tour? Okay. All right, let me see what color she's using. <laughs> Uh, okay, because she doesn't say the, uh, over here, wait a minute, she doesn't say the color, and I don't know my Prismacolor numbers very well, um, so she has six, nine, about ten colors, I think, she has ten colors, and I can see that some of them are yellow, that some of them are sepia, an orange, it looks like a dark brown and a green, um, because <laughs> I don't know, like, 940, you know, I think that's a, a might be a, a cream color, but I don't know my colors. So I'm going to try to, okay, that's 914. That's not one she's using. She's using 916. Might be easier to come up here because I don't know if they're cream or what. So I should have thought about this a little sooner if I'm trying to do the exact colors. Do you know what I mean, Vern? The exact same colors as her. Um... Okay, it's not that cream. I don't know. This may be this may be a fail, guys, because I'm gonna spend an hour looking for colors. <laughs> I'm gonna spend all this time looking for colors. <clears throat> I don't have a color chart, and never made a Prisma color chart. I know, shame on me, right? Okay, yellows. Let's try that. <laughs> uh, nine sixteen is canary yellow. It's, okay, so that is one of them. Nine. What's nine forty? Y'all tell me if you have a color chart. Mermaid, do you have a color chart? Okay, so nine sixteen is canary yellow. Okay, so let's see here. There's 940. She's saying 943. Here's 942. I, I don't know. We'll see. I want to try to use the same one so that if y'all can play along. But, yeah. I know I have canary yellow. I think it's over here. This is canary yellow. Okay. All right. So there's 916. So I got canary yellow. I'm just going to color over it. <laughs> You have the color chart. 940 is eggshell. Okay. Now, now we're talking. That might be in here. Let's see. I know I have every color, but I group my colors kind of different by what I use them as, right? Eggshell. And I have them in bundles, and then I have them in my tray. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Oh, this is awesome. All right, guys. I don't know if we want to do this today. Because I'm going to be here a while. We might have to put this off till I have time to dig through all my pencils and find the right color. Here's sand. That's not one of them. Why can't I find eggshell? There it is. Okay. So I got 940 and 96. I got two of the 10. Okay, I got two. Okay, we're not using that. Okay, the next one is 943. 943. Okay, here, somebody can tell me. Nine, I need 943 and 948. <laughs> yeah, I got 940. Yeah, I got 940 as sand. I got 940 and I got um, 9... 
16. I got two. <laughs> I got the sand. I know there's a lag in chat. So I need 943 and 948. I got the sand back. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> we'll see how long this takes people i want to draw i just want to i just want to look at the color and go okay that looks like this color you know but i'm trying to do her tutorial okay 943 is burnt ochre okay Got 945 here, Sienna. That's not one of the colors, though. Okay. Here we go. Burnt ochre, 943. Okay, we've got 943. And 948 is what? 948 is sepia. Okay. 945. Okay, I should just get out my bundles here. There's terracotta. If you're watching this, just fast forward. <laughs> if you're watching this recording, just fast forward. Okay, let me get out my brown bundle here. Okay, so we're looking for 948, right? What did we say it was? 948 is sepia. It's probably in here. Nine forty five, nine forty six. Don't need any one of those. I'm looking for nine forty eight. Nine forty seven. Okay, see this is taking so long. Terracotta. What's this one? It's not <sighs> Team is working. I know. I can't find sepia. I would think it's in here, but it might not be. Okay, I don't know. Let's pass that one up for now. Okay, um, 918 and 920. 918 and 920. 920. <laughs> People are dropping like flies, I'm sure. Like I said, I think we might postpone this project. Oh, here's 948. There's sepia. I found it. Okay, found sepia. So now we need 918 and 920. <laughs> 918 and I got I guess I should make me a chart shouldn't I if I'm gonna do these I just I don't go by that I look at the colors and I look at what I want to draw and I just pick colors I don't know the numbers at all 918 is orange okay I do not know my uh, number and I've been using these pencils for over 30 years and I still do not know the numbers okay so uh, 918 okay got 918 920 isn't that pathetic? Let me put these back up here until we need them. <laughs> Can you look at the color on the barrel in the picture? Yeah, see, it doesn't have the barrels. It just kind of, I mean, I can get a general idea. Like 1003 is a light orange. So, you know, let's see. I need my light oranges. So 1003, that, that does help a little, I guess, <laughs> by looking at the number and the color, right? Okay, so I'm looking for 1003. There it is. Spanish orange. So what they're saying it is. One, okay, so we got that. Okay, I got canary yellow, didn't I? Yeah. And then I already got sand. So now I need... 
what's 935? 935. I don't even see 935. Oh, here we go. Black. Okay, 935 is just black. Okay. There's an unsharpened one. Here's what I think. No. Where's my true? Don't anybody email me. We're trying our best here. Okay, so there's black. Okay, then I need 920. What was 920? Green. 920 is this light green. Okay. 920 is just called light green. Hang on, guys. We're getting there. We're getting there. That's sap green. It might be in my bundle. Oh. I'm trying to look at what it looks like there. Is this it? That's true green. And see, I have different brand. I mean, different sets. Like I got my barrels in here. Here, is this it here? No, that's sap green. It looks like it, but it's not it. Yeah. I'm looking for light green in here. I'm not seeing it. Spring green. Pale. There's pale green. What is the number? 920. No, it's different. Hmm. Okay. Do I have to dig in my box? Or can I just find something similar? <laughs> I'm not seeing it in here. I thought it was this one, but it's not. This is, uh, it's close. Whoops. Look, it's close to that. Don't worry about taking your time. <laughs> if you like watching me dig around for pencils, this one is sap green, and it's number 120. I need 920, though. That's what it says. What's this one? What's this one? Ah, I found it. Okay, 920. It was in my, it was in my, uh, what do you call it, box. It was in here. <laughs> See, I have to dig around. Okay, so I got the green. All right, let's put that back up out of the way. What else do I need now? All I need is two colors, 908 and 1098. So 908, I'm looking for where they reference it. <clears throat> where are they? Re uh, here it is, dark green. Dark green. 908. Dark green. Ah, yay, score! <laughs> 908. Okay, now I just need 1098. 1098. Put these back up here in my way. I'm going to run out of room. Okay, 1098. Was this one of the colors I needed? I think I pulled this. It's not one of the colors, I don't think. Hmm. I don't think that was one of them. Did we say Sienna was one of the colors? No, burnt ochre was. Okay. Okay, so the only one now I need is 1098. So let's see where I can find that. It looks like a brown color. A green brown. It's artichoke. Oh going to be one of those hard to find ones because it could be any of these okay hang on could be any of these brown colors light umber dark brown yeah I even have some grays stuck in here from the last time was 1094 sepia another sepia 
Hang on. <laughs> Sienna was a color? 9.45? No? 9.43 was. Burnt ochre was a color. 9.43. Sienna was 9.45. It's not there. No, not 9.45. Okay, so what are we looking for again? <laughs> what are we looking for again? Oh my gosh. What was 1098? 1098 was what again? Because see, look, I can't. It looks just like a brown. A grayish brown. Artichoke. Got it. Artichoke. Okay, we got all our colors. <laughs> that only took 30 minutes. <laughs> I was going to have time to do the eye. <laughs> Where'd my rubber band go? <laughs> oh my gosh, girls. Okay. So, let's go on. Let's move this book out of the way. Okay. Where's my paper? <laughs> now, I'm going to draw it bigger. I'm going to draw it bigger than she's got it. Uh, not too much bigger, but you know. Okay, so now let me just go ahead. Let's sharpen everything up because some of these need sharpening. Move my little, move my little gingerbread guy out of the way there. He's going to get covered up with uh, shavings. <laughs> Thanks, Mermaid Jen. Okay, so let's sharpen these babies up. Love real time. <laughs> I got my coffee here. I just hope that all these pencils that I pulled are not some of the ones. I try when I find one that's like one of the old ones that broke easy. I try to pull those out. But sometimes I miss them. And so hopefully all these that I pulled are not from any of the bad sets. I don't mind real time, but people that watch the record, I guess I can just fast forward, right? Okay, look what I just did. That's a bad one. See how that crunched right there? This is one of the, this is a smaller one. This is an older one that, see? See, that's what happens on the, the sets that were bad wood. <laughs> that's what happens on that, those old sets that had issues out of Mexico. Yeah. I'll see if I can still use it. Okay, I got them pretty sharp. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take the uh, burn ochre and draw it. Normally I would draw this with my blue uh, graph gear. And then I can erase if I didn't get it just right. But we're going to work on it. Alright, so I'm just going to go from the... Sh I'm going to just draw the shape of it here. Then we're going to go back... Well, I guess I could start from here. I was going to say, then we'll go back. And I am zoomed in, so i got to keep shuffling things around. got to shuffle here. See if I can draw on the hump. <laughs> can I draw on the hump? And I'm going to draw it a little bigger. Okay? I'm only going to draw it just a little bigger than what it is. Because I'm not going to draw it in black. <laughs> hey, Paula. You ordered the two books yesterday. Thought it would be good. Apparently, just look at <laughs> I know. Well, you know what, though, Paula? If you, you're good at swatching. If you have a color chart, it's no problem. Or if I had one, I could bring one up online. But I can't do that while I'm... I guess I could go get the iPad and bring one up online. You know, if you could just go look at a color chart, it's much easier. And then uh, you could look at the, because they do reference the colors under each box here. So that would have helped too, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. So I'm just going to sketch this out a little here. Something like that. 
I don't want black lines. I don't want to fight against black lines. <laughs> okay, so now, there we go. Oh, let's put the pupil in here. Okay, G uh, Melody, you take care. Um, I don't think I'm going to do the fur. She's got the fur, and she really, you know, up until, and it looks like she just kind of didn't even do much work on the fur here. At the very last step, it's just like she just kind of colored in the fur. It's not like shaded or blended or anything. So we're just going to concentrate on the eye. Okay, we're just going to do the eyeball. We're going to run out of time. What time is it? <laughs> We, we spent uh, an hour, uh, well, we spent some time looking for, uh, looking at um, the haul stuff. Okay, so here we go. We got the, we got the eye here. Let's get it tightened up. So I don't want a black, even though there will be black in there, but. Okay, and then there's kind of fur around the, there we go. <laughs> what sharpener was, uh, this one, this is the uh, M and, um, M and R. This one here has a two. But I like, I'll use any, here's the bullet one. I'll use any metal one. I'll use any of these. I'm not, I'm not really picky. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. Okay, let's see what she says. We want, just like we did, where's my other sample here? Just like we did in um, Helen's book, where we did the, this eye, and she had two pages here. So she had two pages of steps on this, well, actually three full pages. So she had three pages of steps just to get to the tier. And here's where we, this is what we ended up with. So I tried my best to go step by step, just like she showed. So that's what I want to do on this, too. All right, let's move all this extra papers out of the way here. Okay, so that's what we're going to do, just to show you a step by step. I begin by drawing a light colored arc, which is, she's using sand. Let me get the pick the right things here. I begin by drawing a light colored arc from the left to the right side of the pu of the eye over the pupil, over the top of the pupil. I fill in the bottom section with sand, 940, leaving white space in the middle. So all around the pupil here, and it might be a little hard to see, but see how it's white around the pupil? So she colored in just kind of like a base coat here. Let's see if we can get through all these steps. She just went over the top like that, leaving white in the middle there. Are we having fun yet? Is it? It looks a little flashed out. Let me close the blind. All right, who's this man? Oh, he's walking his dog. I was going to say, who's this man out in front of my house? He's just walking his dog, probably letting him poop in my yard. <laughs> Is that any better? It's going to be light at first, right? Okay, so there's the sand. <laughs> Step two. Next, I intensify the middle of the eye with canary yellow, filling in most of the white space. Okay, so right in here now, she's using canary yellow. Now, I can't promise at the end that I'm going to add my own fla flavor, <laughs> but we'll see. Um, <laughs> okay, so it looks like she just went in. She, she says she just intensified the middle. So right in here, covering up most of the white. Okay, next. Then she went in with uh, the Spanish orange. Then I deepened the color just below the pupil.
And we might have to add some more layers. Is this showing up okay, guys? <laughs> okay, Scoobs. Oh, okay, so then she did it right below the pupil here. That's step three. So I'm following, I'm trying to do it just like she's showing us. Because I want to do this a demo for everybody to know how to do a demo. You know. Okay, looks great. Okay, number four. On top of that, I introduced some burnt ochre. Pretty sure this is it. Yeah. Blending in circles. I don't go quite up to the pupil. Okay, so like right in here. Now, now I already looked. Now, I can see the dip from step three to four. There's more yellow farther down. So, I'm thinking I should bring some of that down further. The canary yellow. Because by the time you get to this step here, I see more canary yellow here than from step three. So, I'm going to add a little bit more canary yellow. Just to bring this down, because my eye, my eye is a little bigger than hers, right? So I have to think a little bigger here. All right, now let's go on top of that with burnt ochre. Blending in circles, I don't go quite up to the pupil. All right, so we're going to just do some circles. I'm trying to do it just like she says, okay? Blending in circles. <laughs> and I'm trying just to guess by how many how much lay you know how much of it she's putting down because she you know she's not telling you i uh, i put five layers of the of brown on there i'm just going by the picture and trying to get it as intense as she has it see this is where we are right here we're on number four y'all still with me <laughs> Yeah, Helen has two books out, and then this Jennifer Zimmerman, this is the only one I know of. I got it off of Amazon with my uh, Christmas Amazon money. <laughs> okay, so let's... And also, guys, when you're doing the step-by-step, -step, don't feel like, like I just ha added that more yellow. If you decide that you look at something and you go, you know, I didn't quite get enough yellow. Let me go back to my original. Uh, I didn't get quite enough color right there. Then just go back and put that in, you know. I'm trying to, I'm going by each picture. Okay, all right. So let's see if that's dark enough. I mean, use your judgment because you have different hand, you probably have different pressure. You know, than other people. Why would you need a book on color? Susan, Suzanne, I'm, I, you can always learn. Everybody can always learn. But I also want to show you guys stuff. You never can get in a, too much. You can't ever practice enough. So this is, you know, this is good practice for me too. It's good for me to learn how to follow steps. Plus, I'm trying to show you guys new things. Do you want me to keep showing you the same things for the seven more years? <laughs> okay, so I'm kind of taking my time here and looking at the picture kind of close, trying to get it as close as I can to what she's doing. Okay. All right, number five. Then... With a razor sharp point, I draw a wavy line for variation in the iris. So she's making it almost look like like watery line. See how she has a little line right there? Almost looks like it's kind of watery. <laughs> so I think my point's sharp enough. So I'm going to draw this kind of wavy line like she has. Not too dark. Not too much pressure. 
and I'm just trying to follow along. Okay, something like that. I should be writing a book. I don't have time to write books. I don't have time to write books and give y'all uh, do do stuff here for you guys for free. <laughs> I don't have time to do both. You don't want me to do paid classes? Okay, six. Now I use a razor sharp artichoke, and I think that's pretty razor sharp. It's not exactly. It's not. I wouldn't call a razor sharp. But it's sharp. I'm I'm ragging on you, Suze. I hope you know. I hope you know. Um, now I use. You need to come down and stream with me. Is what you need to do, Suze. What a button say. For the for for the for the humor. <laughs> uh, yeah, GTO said she's that person that learns from watching. See, I do too. Just like when I showed y'all earlier the let brush lettering, I went and found some, you know, I found the the right pretty stuff. What's her name again? Anyway, I found her. I liked her. I liked her easy style. I liked her little, you know, little demos. So I just picked her. There's thousands of girls out there and probably some guys too uh, doing brush lettering that you can find on YouTube. Same thing for pencils. There are hundreds, if not thousands of people doing uh, YouTube videos on uh, coloring and tutorials. <laughs> I could write one just for you guys, Susan. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh no, I couldn't do a pay class in a, in person. I'm not. I I don't do that kind. I'm I I'm not that kind of person that goes and does. Um, I used to do um, design team type stuff at scrapbook stores, and do classes and demos. I don't like to travel. I don't like going places. I like staying home. Like if Sue's wants to come down here, Paula's been here, come down to my studio and we do a stream together. I don't, I don't want to set up things like that. It's just not me. And nothing wrong with it. Trust me, if anybody has, you know, there's all kinds of, uh, you know, paid for get togethers that people do. I'm just not one that does that. I don't like travel. I don't like going, in, I, it's just not me. Let's just say that, it's just not me. <laughs> now one or one at a time or two want to come down here and i you know and i know you hubster's like you know who's this person you want to have oh you know he's he's pig he's protective of me <laughs> uh, okay so where were we all right step six now i use a razor sharp artichoke 1098 pencil to create the short rays going outward from the pupil and a second row that extends to the edge of the iris. So she's got kind of two rows using the artichoke. So she's got one little row, and I'm just going to do little tiny stretches. So she's got, I'm just going to try to follow her here. And it's probably hard to see. I'm pretty zoomed in, but I'm also going light with it. You know, so she has some coming off of the pupil, which she has hers drawn in black. See, I'm, I'm not putting a black line around mine yet if I probably won't need to but so she has some com rays coming off the the highlight in the pupil like that and then she has another row of rays coming out and I can see again that it looks like she is either darkening with the artichoke you know, not just rays, but there's a darker spots in there. From step five to step six, there's a deeper color in there. Okay, I can feel, okay, welcome, Jean. Welcome back. Okay, so she has a couple, like a double row of, you know, pupil lines coming out. And it also looks to me from here to here that she has darkened around that 
she's darkened around that line. See where we do that initial line? Look, it's darker in this one. And she doesn't mention that. See, she's not mentioned. She's talking about the rays here. But see how that, that squiggly line is darker here? So somewhere she's darkened up that little squiggle. So we're going to darken up the squiggle too a little bit. Even though she doesn't mention that. She doesn't mention that in her step. I'm going to still do a few more rays here. How we doing, guys? We <laughs> and some of these extend out a little further. And then she also has some all the way out to the edge here. Looks like she put some of this artichoke on the outer edge of the iris there. And I don't know if she did it with artichoke, but it wasn't over here, so I'm guessing she did it with artichoke. Yeah, Jean's got her sinus headache. I might have to go back and add more color of other colors if it gets darker. I'm just taking my time and looking at her picture here. It's a little darker around this edge. It carries down. Pretty close. Okay, let's go up here to number seven. <clears throat> now I intensify the brownish splotch with some orange and bring, <clears throat> bring some to the edge, the left edge too. Okay, so now she's going to go over all this with some orange and brings it down here too. No, I'm putting no pressure. Light, light, light layers here. So I think I'm going to have to add a little bit more yellow down in here after a while, but we'll see. Still with me, guys? Are y'all trying to clean up Jean's sinuses? <laughs> Sorry, Jean. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. And I know it looks a little different because she's got hers outlined in black and I did not outline mine in black. <laughs> Even though I might need to put some black, but not, not yet. Okay. Now number eight. Here we go with um, sepia. Okay. So now 948. Yeah. Then I use a super sharp sepia, 948, to darken the center rays and add a cast shadow from the eyelid and skin below. Okay, so now we're going to do a little more color in here. <laughs> no, that's all right, Jean. I'm just teasing you. I'm teasing you, Jean. <laughs> gotta, gotta, gotta laugh, right? Okay, so here we go. So we got I'm trying to I'm trying to make you feel better, Jean. 
give you a little. Uh oh, I just see I just dropped off. <laughs> Let's sharpen that again, shall we? <laughs> if your pencil lead just drops off, it's time to sharpen it again. <laughs> I don't know what the way to, it's supposed to eventually look like. This is the our final here. This is the final result. I think it's just supposed to look like, you know, differentiations in the pupil with the cat. This is where we're heading right here. That's the final look. <laughs> okay, let's get back up here now and do our super sharp sepia center rays. Because the reason they say super sharp is so that they're tiny. They're thin, you know, so you don't have fat lines in there. Okay, she doesn't have too many on this side. They're pretty much down here. <laughs> And then she colors in this very lightly here. And again, remember guys, my eye is bigger. I may I drew it bigger than hers. So that would show up better here. Okay, then she has it coming down in here too. Sharpen that up a little. Okay. All right. Now, next she uses some 1098, which I think that's the artichoke, right? Yeah. Now I'm going to use some 1098 again to create a subtle core shadow on the bottom edge of the eye and I, it looks like also she's gone over the top it looks like she's added some of that artichoke over that sepia because it looks green it, the sepia looks kind of brown and that looks more green so I am going to do that I don't know if she did or not but it looks much more green in the picture then the sepia is browner, so I'm just going to put a little bit over it. We'll see where she goes, but it needs to be a little greener and less brown. Okay. And then she says she goes along the edge. Same for in here. It needs to be a little greener. According to the picture. Of course, you know, the picture could be a little deceiving. So she's going along the core shadow. Go a little higher with the eye. I just freehand drew mine. Okay, next I add dark green 908 for a few t 
ticks around the edge. And I also lightly accent the wavy line a touch too. Okay. So we're going to go with the dark green. I'm resisting the urge to get a yellow out and blend this green and yellow because it looks lime green here. <laughs> um, maybe she goes back over it with, yeah, she does with yellow down here. Okay. I'm resisting the urge to pull out the yellow and go over this. <laughs> and I'm trying to follow it step by step. Did she put green in there? It looks like she has some green in here, but I can't, she didn't say, but the picture shows more green. few ticks looks more like looks more than just a few so I'm following the I'm following the picture as much as I am her instructions okay <clears throat> okay I fill in the pupil black oh good this is I like doing this part where's my black black go oh there it is okay now we're going to fill in the pupil are we still here <laughs> Vix what are you going to do oh this is I thought you were talking about Vix Vapor Rub I saw Viva Pour Gosh, I thought you were still trying to heal, Jean. I think my pupil needs to be a little bigger because my eye is a lot bigger. So let's make my pupil just a little bigger. I might have to go back in there with a few extra green things. The little um, rays because I kind of covered up some of them here. I'm go back in with a few more rays. You're talking about Vix? You are talking about Vix. <laughs> I remember Vix Vapor Rub. Somebody, what was it? I, I read something on one of those uh, somewhere about putting your it on your feet in socks. I've never done that. Has anybody done that? Put Vix Vapor Rub on their feet and in their socks and put put their feet in socks. <laughs> Thanks, Terry. See, I'm trying to. She's got more green up here now. Look, she's gone from this to this, and it's it's quite a different dark. See how much darker this is? But she doesn't say that. She doesn't say that in here to add more green. <laughs> but you can tell. Look, right? You can tell that she's added more green there. So I'm going to. I'm going to add more green, even though she didn't really say to do that. But from the pictures, you know, if you want it to look like the picture. And see, I see olive green in there, too. I guess more, I need more um, of the avo avocado. 
Oh, wait. Let's go back to the dark green a minute. My dog said that doesn't work. It has to go on your chest. Well, I mean, I think that's for something different, too. But I'm not sure, Galena. I'm not sure the whole purpose of the foot thing. <laughs> I, that's what it was, the coughing. Maybe that's what it was, Steffi. Or an organic onion. What's the difference between a regular Vidalia onion and an organic onion? What's the difference? Can someone tell me? I don't cook. I draw onions. I don't know where my picture of my onion is right now. But Oh, you cook the onion first to activate the sulfur compounds. <laughs> Terry, are you just making that up? Oh, my gosh. Okay, so I'm going back in here with some of the avocado where I can see it in this picture. <laughs> I'm just going to add a little bit more avocado in there. Color, that is. Not the vegetable. Not the vegetable. Or is, that, or is an avocado a fruit? I'm not sure. Okay, that's pretty close. See, I just see more orange and stuff. I mean, it looks a little more orange when you tilt it there. So you can kind of see. See, it looks a little flat there, but there's more the true color. It just kind of flashes out when I lay it flat. Vapor rub can also be used to release some soreness in muscles. Oh, now see, I did not know that, Terry. I guess it's never been an issue that I've had to deal with. Okay, now, I do see that she has, and maybe it's with the avocado. She did say that she deepened some of the shadows, and some of my uh, squiggly lines are not as dark as hers. So let's darken up my squiggly lines a little bit. They're not quite as dark as hers. Okay, something like that. Okay, let's go on to 13. I blend 943 and, th and 935. Okay, now she's going around the eye rim. Okay, so 943 uh, is the um, ochre. And 935, is that sepia? No, it's 930. Oh, that's black, I think. Is that black? Yeah. So she's taking the, the ochre and the black. She blends them around the eye rim with no black on the very bottom. It will have a lighter, more intense color than the upper lid. So I'm thinking this is like getting ready to go down into the fur area, like the uh, eye lid, the eye line, uh, the bottom eye, the lid of the, the bottom lid. Like kind of around the eye there. And then she has some up here at the top. Again, this is gonna be where the fur is gonna start coming out of, but I'm not I don't think I'm gonna draw the fur, but okay, so she has that around the eye. See, I can see I need to do more blending. I don't know. She doesn't. We're getting down to the wire here. I mean, we're running out of steps. <laughs> okay. Then she has the black more around. But not down in here, she said. It is more intense up here at the very top. We're getting there. Thanks. 
Let's tilt it a little so you can see the color a little better. Okay. No black under here, she said, but she does have a little over on this side. And a little there. See Wolf Eye Step 12. Okay, let's see what Wolf Eye Step 12. Oh, she's starting to work in the fur. Okay, so that's what she's talking about here, the fur. I'm not going to do the fur. I use this, yeah, she's starting to do fur lines. Is that all she's doing in this? It needs more yellow. Where did I not put enough yellow? I don't know. I got to go back in here with some a little bit more yellow and sepia. And see, that looks lime green. And to get that lime green, you've got to go over that green that and that avocado that we did with yellow. She never said to go over the green with the yellow. See? She goes yellow, 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 and then moves into green and never goes back to yellow again. And you need more yellow on top of that. I don't know if you'd be able to see. Okay, can you tell how that's lime, kind of a lime green in there? To get that lime green, you've got to go back over your green with yellow. So I'm gonna, here's where I'm gonna do my own flavor. <laughs> so I'm gonna go over those greens that I just did with yellow. And it already looks more like the picture. I think she missed a step. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> It needed more yellow on top of that green. Because it's like a lime green, kind of. And you don't get that without more yellow. You need that extra layer of yellow on here. So, add that extra yellow. That's just me. And then I also want to kind of blend that, that ochre color around. I'm going to go back in here with my sand color to smooth this out. I want that not so pencil-y. I need a little bit blend right there. I'm using the sand to blend. Okay, let's go back with the yellow now. And see, it needs a little bit more of the... I just probably didn't add enough of this. That's, that's just probably me. I didn't add enough of that. And a little bit more orange. Needs a little bit more orange in there, too. I probably just didn't add quite enough color when I did that. Now I'm going to go back over everything with yellow. Including those rays. They look lime and I'm, I'm over here cleaning off my pencil tip. As I pick up green, I want to clean my pencil tip off. But <laughs> I say, but you, I'm a better, I'm a te good teacher. I don't know. I'm just following along here, trying to give steps. I just kind of talk out what I do. I don't know. Is that what a teacher, if you, if you just talk out what you're doing? <laughs> okay. So, let's just bring a little bit more yellow to that. And it kind of blends, too. And again, this is her eye. It's not necessarily how I would do mine, you know, if I was drawing a cat eye. Because now she's going to get, see, now it's getting into the uh, corner of the eye and all that with some grays and everything. And she didn't mention that. Okay, so then she says, is that all the steps? Yeah. Then she says to use a white gel pen for a highlight. 
below the top cast shadow. I guess she, I don't really see it on here. But I would do my own, like, let me show you here. <laughs> Here's one. I want to add my own flavor, okay? So I'm thinking she may mean right here. I'm just using a Posca. Use a white gel pen for a highlight below the top cast shadow as seen in the finished picture. Oh, let's go up here to the finished picture. Okay, so she is adding a little bit more up here. Okay. See the highlight under the cast shadow right there? But to me, it also needs some kind of highlight on the pupil, I think. She doesn't add one, but I think it needs a highlight on the pupil. Not just like right along that edge, but... So if you just ignore the fur, if you because we didn't do the fur, but I think it looks pretty close. I think she brought her cast shadow down a little further than mine. She brought her eyelid shadow down a little further. But I'm going to add a little, a few little white rays here just to brighten that up. It's pretty close. Again, I drew my own eye, so it's a little bit different shape than hers. But I don't know. Let me, let me see something real quick. Let me look on. Dang, I have all kinds of messages on my phone. I'm glad I turned my phone off while I'm streaming. Let's see, cat eye. Needs watch hands. <laughs> let me do, um, let's see. Let me just pick one here. I don't think that so much matters. I just want to get a, a forward facing cat eye. Yeah, see they need, it needs more, uh, it needs a highlight. So I'm going to add it. I'm going to add a little bit more. Crossing over the pupil like. I'm just going to add my own little flavor, like I said before. I just want a little bit more bright there. So, anyway, there's our cat eye. Again, if I took a gray and did the, did the, uh, you know, the corner of the eye here. Because she carries it out with some more fur. You know, she adds the fur here. And I just wanted to concentrate on just the eye itself. But you can start to see how we can. She has a few little hairs around it. Thanks, guys. So there's kind of doing her step out. <laughs> Thanks. And it, you know, it doesn't have the fur up here and all that, but you get kind of get the idea. So there's our little sample. There's our little cat eye sample. I hope y'all like that. So it's about 11. We have time to do something else, but I would stop this recording just so that we can, uh, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this recording, take a quick break, go get some coffee. And uh, it's only not even 11 yet. Thanks, guys. So if y'all want to hang around for a bit, um, let me just save this video. And thanks for watching. If you're watching recording, again, this is out of The Secrets of Coloring, Jennifer Zimmerman. That's where we did this one. And if you want to see the other one, this one where we did 
the eye out of this one a couple months ago. This one is, let me just tuck that in there. This one is special, Color of Special Effects by Helen Elliston. And she has a second book out now. So this was the first one, Color of Special Effects. So that one's Helen Elliston, and this one is Jennifer Zimmerman, and you can find them on Amazon. So, yeah, well, I hope you all enjoyed that. I had fun once I found the pencils. <laughs> okay, okay, guys, hang on.